Juliana Stratton made history, becoming the first black American to serve as Lieutenant Governor alongside Governor J.B. Pritzker. The Southside native's entire career has focused on bringing people together, building consensus and solving problems. In her role as Lieutenant Governor, she leads the Justice, Equity and Opportunity Initiative and chairs the Illinois Council on Women and Girls, the Governor's Rural Affairs Council, the Military Economic Development Council, and the Illinois River Coordinating Council. This year, the Chicago Defender wanted to know what Dr. King's vision looks like today. We reached out to community leaders, activists, advocates, and experts in law, politics, health care, and education to ask the question, what does social justice look like now? Today, in a Chicago Defender exclusive, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton talks to us about her historic election, her role as Lieutenant Governor, and what social justice looks like in politics. I just like, you know, you made history as Lieutenant Governor. So what have the past few years been like in this role? Well, first and foremost, I'm so honored to serve the people of this great state of Illinois, and I'm honored to do so alongside a tremendous leader, Governor J.B. Pritzker, uh, who every single day uh, puts the needs of the people of Illinois and, and our goal to really lift up families all across this state. And I think it's really um, indicative of the legacy that was left by Dr. King. When I was inaugurated in 2018, uh, I came into office as the first, actually 2019 was the actual inauguration date. And I came into office as the first black lieutenant governor in Illinois over 200 year history at that time. And, uh, you know, I never have forgotten the fact that I come from the daughter of someone, my dad, Henry, who marched alongside of Dr. King in Selma. Uh, or the fact that I'm the daughter of a teacher who spent her life focused on educating young people in the Chicago public school system or uh, then went on to the city colleges of Chicago to teach adults education because she valued education just as Dr. King did, expanding those opportunities. Or the fact that I'm the descendant of uh, people, the Stevens, William Stevens, my great, great grandfather, who started a town in Stevensville, Mississippi, after they were freed from being slaves. And uh, the thought of how, you know, they built a town that was focused on education and building a faith foundation and a school system and a, um, a business, a store, uh, and farmed the land. All of those things are part of who I am. And so I bring that into my role as Lieutenant Governor as I think about how many of those issues continue to be something that we have to make progress on. And so Dr. King had a dream, but it's a dream that was passed on to me and all of us really to continue the work that he started. You bring that up uh, that we're still trying to get certain things done like a, a voting rights act, an adequate, adequate you know, gun control bill. Um, do you think in this climate that there is any any chance for a meeting of the the minds politically on both sides when it comes to advocating for social justice? Well, what I can say is that, as Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And the bottom line is, is that any of these areas where we are seeing inequities, when we are seeing injustice, where there are still people who do not have enough food and food insecurity is an issue, where we still have people who are housing insecure and don't have a place to call home or a home, uh, a roof over their head, when we still have the disparities that we are seeing, particularly in this COVID-19 pandemic, which did not start the health uh, disparities, but exacerbated or really illuminated health disparities that have always existed. When we have the wage gap that we have and so many other issues that continue to plague our communities, including, um, you know, high rates of violence in many communities and uh, mass incarceration and so many other issues. I think it's an example of how this is, these are the types of issues that require everyone to be a part of because we are all 
affected by them. Now, whether it's something where people come to a meeting of the mind, so to speak, that's a different question, because as we know, there are extremists right now here in the state of Illinois and all across the country that are doing everything that they can to make sure that we don't make progress on these issues. But the bottom line is, is that everyone, and that's if we really want to honor Dr. King's legacy, we have to realize that everyone plays a role and that uh, the fact that if there is injustice anywhere, every single person's going to be in fact impacted by that. And so we all have to do what we can to come forward. And when there are those that will push back against these kinds of policies and this kind of progress, as they did in Dr. King's day, we see it today, uh, then the rest of us who do believe that we have to honor each other's humanity and lift up every community, we must double down, not just in our work, but double down in the hope that we have that things can and will be better and that we can't get discouraged. We just have to, again, double down our efforts and say we are going to keep marching towards freedom because that's what Dr. King's legacy is all about. What do you think as you as you think back over the your tenure as lieutenant governor, what have been some of the things that you're most proud of? Oh, goodness. Uh, there's so many things that we've done as an administration that have been so critical, such as raising the minimum wage, which is important for income equality and making sure that people can thrive in every community. Investments, record a number of investments into education, um, the work that we've done to expand health care. But personally, as the lieutenant governor, one of the things that I'm really proud of is our Restore, Reinvest, and Renew program, which invests 25% of tax revenues uh, from the adult use cannabis sales into communities that have been most harmed by the war on drugs and systemic disinvestment. Why is this so important to me? Well, number one, I chair the R3 board, so I get to work alongside some incredible individuals who are connected to their communities, who know what's best for their communities. And we are investing in things like violence prevention, reentry services, um, civil legal aid, economic development, and youth development, all things that are critical if we want healthy, thriving communities. This is a program where the uh, investments are sustained. We did $35 million last year. We have $45 million that people can apply for right now. But every year, year after year, these funds are going to be invested into these communities that need it the most. And why I'm so proud of that is because we know that if we want to turn our communities around, if we want to see every community be healthy, then it can't come with sort of these piecemeal efforts. It has to come with long-term sustained investment. And that's what the R3 program does. So that's just one of many things. Uh, I also get to chair lead what's called the Justice, Equity, and Opportunity Initiative, which is focused on bringing an equity lens to policy making and really creating a justice system that reflects our values. And so I think that this is another opportunity. So we're doing things like making sure that people who leave our Department of Corrections have ID cards so that when they go back into their community, they can access jobs and education and health care. And we know that if people don't have those opportunities, they're only going to unfortunately cycle in and out of the system. We want to make sure people have what they need to be in their communities and to thrive. When I think about you and Governor Pritzker, along with so many elected officials, I am so sure you had no clue when you guys were inaugurated that you would be literally leading during a global pandemic, racial unrest, uh, a reckoning of sorts that's happening in the country. What has that been like to have to deal with so many different major issues that have affected the state of Illinois, but also nationally. What has that been like as a Black woman in office to, to deal and reckon with all of this while still trying to impact change and, and keep our, our citizens safe? Well, certainly uh, none of us expected that we would be facing the greatest public health crises of our lifetimes with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and it's another example of why leadership matters. And you have to have people who have the best interest of the people that we serve at heart. And that's certainly the case with Governor Pritzker. It's certainly the way that I try to approach my role as Lieutenant Governor and supporting his efforts 
And that is that um, every single day, our goal in following the science, making sure we listen to the experts and uh, you know, doing the hard work of communicating to people as clearly as we can that you know, we have to get vaccinated, we have to wear our masks, we have to do the things that will help uh, uh, really get us through this pandemic. And that's exactly what we've done. But at the same time, uh, in our work to keep people safe and healthy throughout the state of Illinois in the midst of a global pandemic that has affected every uh, city, state in this nation, as well as every country, um, we also had to continue to do the work that we set out to do. And we said that we wanted to put Springfield back on the side of working families. We said that we wanted to make sure that we did the kind of work that would really make a difference in people's lives, especially coming after an administration that had done, quite frankly, so much destruction and damage. And so this was our focus. And right now I can say we're doing what we need to do to put Illinois back on the fiscal sound fiscal footing that it needs to be on. We have had the first credit rating update upgrades in over two decades, showing that we are doing what needs to happen. We are passing balanced budgets so that we can make sure that um, our values are reflected based upon the budgets that have been enacted and uh, making sure that you know, when we do these things that we can put more emphasis on the kinds of services that people need from our government, rather than uh, being in a position where we are being penalized because we are not doing what we need to do from a financial standpoint. So we are putting those things in place. And so what does that mean in terms of the broader context of not just this pandemic, but also the racial unrest that we have seen? Well, what it means is that we need to make sure that, um, we get things in order in terms of our finances so that we can focus on a lot of these other issues that come up in our state. You know, I'm proud of the work that has been done alongside the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus around their four pillars to really focus on uh, that Governor Pritzker signed into law that really focuses on lifting up our black and brown communities and making sure that equity is available to all. Everyone deserves equal justice under the law and uh, no one is exempt from that. And so we are moving on lots of different levels to make sure that the needs of people are met. It's a little more challenging and has been more challenging in a pandemic, but we rose to the challenge and made sure that we didn't just focus on the pandemic, but we focused on the other things people need as well. Well, Lieutenant Governor, I can't thank you enough for speaking with the Chicago Defender today. I hope we can continue to talk throughout, you know, your campaign and reelection and all that other good stuff. So. Well, I, I appreciate your taking the time to talk with me, Danielle. And you know, the Chicago Defender has always been a beacon in our communities. You know, I think about my grandfather, who was a Pullman porter, and the importance of sharing the news uh, that was coming from our community, written by those from our community, and sharing the news that wasn't being told any place else. The Chicago Defender is an incredible legacy uh, and is so critical to our communities. And I just thank you for telling the stories. Thank you so much for that. Have a wonderful MLK day. Thank you. You too. Take care.